Good morning. Welcome back to the Nonprofit Voice, profiling nonprofit organizations and learning more about the services they provide to their communities. In the studio now with us is Allison Sherry and Tom Archer, who are founding members of New Beginnings Community Center, which is a state-of-the-art outpatient facility designed to provide rehabilitation, management, and recovery for people with traumatic brain injuries, as well as physical disabilities, cognitive disabilities, or dementia. Um, Allison and Tom, good morning to you. Good morning. Good morning. Um, you are both founders of the organization. How, how did New Beginnings start? Well, it started with uh, our loved ones getting hurt. Uh, my son, Benjamin, and, uh, and it was Allison's father, Al, Al Barone. And uh, they suffered a traumatic brain injury, which in short is called TBI. And Allison and I met in a support group that was started by Kate Demiglio, who's the vice president and founding member of New Beginnings, and her son Robbie had suffered a TBI uh, 10 years prior, and Kate has always been proactive in the uh, TBI community, and she started a local chapter of Brain Injury Association in New York State, and walked Allison and I, uh, and the three of us decided to make a difference so we decided to put all the modalities under one roof and uh, and really out of frustration of not being able to find the right kind of help for my dad who um, had anger swings and mm -hmm. all kinds of different effects from his brain injury I'd be driving him all over the island I said how great would it be just to have the one building where families can go and have all treatments and once that idea popped in my head, I worked nonstop in finding a building and putting a team together. And um, we put that building up in three months. Mm. We were just, nothing would stop us. So before, before New Beginnings began, yes. um, when you had to bring someone with brain injury, a traumatic brain injury, there are different things that they need and everything was located in many different places and now you bring everything under one roof is that what happened that's exactly i mean we would go to greenport for water therapy we'd be going to stony brook for another therapy and when you have someone with a traumatic brain injury in the car with you it's not an easy transition it's exhausting they don't have the energy it's just really um just so frustrating and devastating mm. So my goal was to just to keep it easy, just to keep it simple. Let's talk about traumatic brain injury. Can you be specific on what that what that means, what that uh, term means? Yeah, uh, traumatic brain injury covers, uh, uh, you know, right away, uh, blunt force trauma to the brain mm -hmm. is traumatic brain injury, like my son Benjamin suffered. Uh, it's also stroke. Anytime the brain suffers, uh, that would be... Uh, traumatic brain injury and traumatic brain injury happens every 19 seconds when I first got involved in traumatic brain injury when Benjamin was hurt October 5th 2007 it used to be 21 seconds every 21 seconds in this country of uh, 307 million people a traumatic brain injury would occur and that's everything from a, a concussion to uh, catastrophic as Ben suffered uh, the now the number has increased, the frequency has increased to 19 seconds, and, and depending on, uh, I haven't checked the CDC, the Center for Disease Control, their stats, and they said, they're the ones that really say it, uh, but I've seen where it said that every 12 seconds. Why is it increasing? I, yeah, I think because of the veterans and the war. Um, the war is really brain injury is has caused so much this particular war um, between amputees and and brain damage and from the bomb explosions but also we go into acquired brain injury and that's where your strokes your aneurysms um, occur so between traumatic and acquired it's just increased so significantly and I think there's a lot more awareness to it mm -hmm. now because when my dad was injured seven years ago even trying to do research to read or find information was difficult where now I feel like it's just so much more out there. Mm -hmm. 
you know, for for the uninitiated who don't know, don't who aren't as familiar with traumatic brain injury, you know, we see something on the movie as somebody gets has a concussion and they wake up in the hospital and then all is well and and the movie ends, but that's not how it is in real life. Talk about, um, you know, how traumatic brain injury affects survivors and how they added, how it affects their families. A, a lot of it. Um I think the core of the injury, especially down the road um, with the depression, mm. I think socialization is a key to recovery. Because if you're depressed, you know, you don't want to do your physical therapy, your occupational, your um, speech. So I think just being amongst other people, and especially for the families, because they feel like, the, you know, the friends drop off. There's a huge amount of isolation. So the core of our center at New Beginnings is that aspect, the socialization, our day programs. We go on fishing trips. We go on cruises. We believe there's life after injury. And I think that helps the family dynamics all the way around. Um, Doing the physical therapy and all is something you need to do to keep the brain moving, to keep it uh, you know, part of the recovery process. But the big thing is to to never give up hope, just to encourage and um, just keep the circle moving. And I think that also helps all our team because our team members all have loved ones with traumatic brain injuries. So when somebody calls us, we get it. And that's I think that's half the battle, mm. understanding it. It's a long road. It's not like the movies. Right. And the person is never the same. So there's a grieving process involved. And it, it just it affects you in so many ways. And I think you be, you, what happens is you learn you have a new normal. Mm. And when you have your new normal and your new friends and your new support system, I think that's when you start healing and moving forward. And, and, and there is what, what I call collateral damage. I took that from... Uh, uh, from the military, I guess, from hearing reports, when a bomb lands, there's collateral damage. Sure. The smart bomb sometimes isn't so smart; it takes out civilians. So uh, I see that as a good, a good terminology for a traumatic brain injury. Collateral damage: the, the victim has the injury, and then the family. Uh, they're, they're never going to be the same. You know, I was a single dad. I was a single dad raising four boys, and. Uh, uh, and I thought that was a tough job, you know, right. especially my twins were only a year and a half when I left home with them. And I thought, you know, folding their little T-shirts, you know, you go through eight outfits a day. I was like, this is killing me. And I was almost to tears once in the laundry. I thought life was tough. And then Benjamin, you know, I get the phone call. Ben was in a horrible, horrible accident. And I need to uh, get to the hospital. And... and Ben was dying, and and my life has, and my children's life, and my family life, and my cousins, and my friends, the the life has changed, you know. And luckily, uh, it, 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 we took that one horrific moment, mm. and we we turned into a positive journey. As I'm sitting here looking at you, and I'm here with Allison, and we we we're doing positive things. But the family is affected, and a lot of times the family will withdraw. And isolate themselves, and and they don't know, they don't know how to navigate the, the 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 hospitals. They don't know how to navigate the system. So the thing that we say, the number one thing that you should do when there is a, a TBI in the house, is is to get yourself to a support group. If not ours, to somebody else's. Southside Hospital has support group. Any support group. That's the first thing you should do once you start to venture out because you're going to meet people that are on the same path as you and you're going to learn all of this anecdotal information that they've have called along the path of TBI. Mm -hmm. so and our support group is the first Wednesday of every month, 7 o'clock, 12 Platinum Court, Medford, right at our building. And we separate into two groups. We have the survivors, we call them survivors, and then we have the family members. And it's it's a huge, important thing to get out there is, is come to a support group. Mm -hmm. you, you need to unite, you know. It was always, you know, mankind has always done better when, you know, we unite with each other as in unions. 
my union man, so I got to say that. And as the United States, you know, we, we all come together. Uh, if you're going to, no man's an island, and if you're going to try and do this yourself, you're not going to do it. And if you had any queries on different uh, uh, medical procedures uh, before you go through all that rigmarole, when you come to a support group, well, you know what? Uh, maybe Nancy's son has tried that. Now you're going to get firsthand her take on it. You know, so by getting coming together, you there is you, you learn a lot. Knowledge is power. So when your family member, you know, ha- uh, suffers a traumatic brain injury, you co- you become from just a family member, a father, to a caregiver. And so I would think that the services that that New Beginnings provides helps you become a better caregiver. Without a doubt. Without a doubt. And if you're have, sitting in that waiting room, <laughs> you're talking to the other family members. You I have hear. questions to ask, yeah. the, the doctors and that sort of thing. Okay. Yeah, and our facility is a state of the art. Now, hyperbaric oxygen therapy is uh, one modality. Uh, it's diving medicine that the Navy has used, but recently it's coming in, the mainstream medicine is using it. And there's 13 applications that insurance will pay for. Recently, the most was wound care. Mm -hmm. It's been proven that uh, by going in the chamber and increasing the oxygen and uh, increasing the atmosphere uh, and the infusion of all that oxygen, not just into the red blood cells, but every cell in the body gets it, that the wounds heal better. Mm -hmm. Well, with TBI, that was still working hard with with other people across the country, uh, specifically Dr. Paul Harch, uh, down in Louisiana, and um, it, the hyperbaric oxygen therapy helps you. So I used to take Ben to Great Neck by ALS Ambulance. I live in a world of acronyms, Advanced mm. Life Support okay. uh, Ambulance. We would travel to Great Neck for hyperbaric oxygen therapy, 32 miles each way. I took him for 120 dives. You do it in set, a dive as a treatment. Mm-hmm. You're doing it in blocks of 40, you wait a month. And... Uh, when I when we were formulating the idea of new beginnings and we would be meeting, I kept telling them, and they would say, Tom, how was your day today? You know, I come in, I'm all haggard, and you're taking care of four boys, you know, and two of them were teenagers, you know, so, uh, and I would say, well, it was good. We went to hyperbaric oxygen therapy. And then they said, well, well what is that, you know? Yeah. And then, uh, so now, in Suffolk County, if you have a traumatic brain injury, you don't have to just travel a great neck. You can come to our building. In our building, we have hyperbaric oxygen therapy for traumatic brain injury. We have two chambers there. And a lot of people stop me in the four chambers. A lot of people say, thank you. They'll stop me and they'll say, well, St. Charles has a chamber. And is this hospital? I said, no, but they don't, they don't do it for traumatic brain injury because uh, insurance doesn't pay for it. Mm-hmm. So... It, they don't do it because they're, it, it's not profitable for them. So they only do it for the 13 applications. Traumatic HBOT for TBI is off label, so it's a private pay, and but we have it in our building, and, and a lot of people get great results from it. I, and I can't say Benjamin, you know, he, he definitely didn't uh, come as far along as I wanted. But I can't say did it, that, it, that it hurt. Mm-hmm. So it was worth it to try the HBOT. How is it that um, these other hospitals uh, can't afford to offer these, you know, these kinds of treatments, but New Beginnings can? I think we differentiate um, because we are, I think we go for it. We we will, you know, we're willing to fundraise for families. Mm-hmm. There's always a way. We never turn anyone away. We're open three years, and I'm, that's what I'm most proudest of. We find a way. We do it. We don't just talk about it. Yeah. If your loved one has an injury, and usually by the time they come to New Beginnings, they're desperate. They've been through the system. It's the last resort. I'll have families come in and just break down in my office. Mm. We're here. We'll find a way, and we do. And that's, and that's our mission. Our mission is to help you. And there's a difference between ho- hospitals are an acute setting and, and then nursing homes when you, or, or a group home, you, know, you, you move into the world of, of subacute. So we, 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 so we come after, the, after the, you get discharged from the hospital. We're long term. And, 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 and we're, so we're there and we have, so now you can come to our building, you can get your physical therapy, and we have a machine 
machine called the Quadricizer, which is a state-of-the-art machine that, that moves all four large muscle groups at, at the same time. It's, mm -hmm. almost like, it's almost like doing an elliptic, mm -hmm. but you're in a chair. And we've had tremendous results. Kate DeMiglio, the vice president of New Beginnings, her son Robbie, he had a catastrophic brain injury 10, 10 well, now like 13 ago and he didn't talk for 10 years did not talk he started using his quadricizer and, and now he talks mm. and now he talks in two languages and most people stop me and they say well wait a minute did he talk did he talk in two languages before the accident and I say yeah he was a college grad and and then he, he, now he talks Spanish mm. and, he, and he's come so far along that he became a pain in the ass to Kate which is what, what we want as a parent, you know, he's back and his quality of life has increased and it's from this machine that she, yeah. she will tell you that this machine we've had Allison's father Al Barone he, He's come so far along because of this machine the quadricizer. Let's talk more about what you provide You know, we, we talked we uh, skimmed a little bit about some of the modalities um, some physical uh, therapies Talk about what, what New Beginnings provides to these uh, traumatic brain injury uh, victims. Okay. We have, uh, we have a bus company. A bus company? Yes, right there for uh -huh. convenience because that's, that's a big problem. How does your loved one get, get to, to New you. Beginnings? You know, because most of them don't drive. Uh -huh. We have an attorney that works in our building, works pro bono. So he helps with um, setting trust funds up, mm -hmm. just helping families financially because that's another huge aspect and a problem yeah. uh, for families. And we also have uh, great speech therapy, occupational therapy, physical therapy. We have uh, a great, a wonderful day program, mm. which is one of a kind because we have structured and unstructured, meaning that if you're unstructured and you're going through a waiver, um, Medicaid, we also want to include the people that fall through the cracks that don't have the insurance or different uh, ways to fund. So we don't turn, we have hardships. Uh, we, um, we do a lot of fundraising to help families financially. We have the hyperbaric oxygen. And then we have new beginnings part. And the new beginnings part is the real support system, the uh, part that does a lot of fundraising just to help. We've recently helped a young girl that was recently in the news, Jahai McMath. She went in for tonsil surgery and was declared brain dead. Mm. In and California. In California. <laughs> and New Beginnings, myself, I personally put an affidavit in to the court saying that I would be willing as a potential facility, or one of the potential facilities, to help this girl in any way we could. And there it was, out in the media. And what it did was, because we are so different, you know, uh, it bought her eight days of life. And now, fast forward three months later, she's not brain dead. She's responding to commands. We just recently went to a fundraiser to honor her and her parents, and that makes me so proud that we stepped up to the plate and we said this young girl needs a chance. Everybody deserves a chance. And um, we're celebrating the fact that she's coming out of, um, well, she's not brain dead. She's just in a, in a coma. And they, they're going to change, uh, soon they're going to change the diagnosis from brain dead. The hospital wouldn't treat her. Each state has their own uh, definition of brain dead. And the hospital in Oakland, California, they declared her brain dead and, um, they wanted her out of the hospital. They wanted to send her to the morgue. And the parents, that was their child. And mm. they didn't want that to happen. And uh, a team got put together, and we got involved in New Beginnings. And we actually were the ones to sign the affidavit to get the injunction to keep the hospital from pulling the plug. They refused to feed her. They refused to give her a, a tracheotomy. They kept her intubated, which really medically that's bad to do after seven days. 28 days and, without food. And so she got out of the hospital. Uh, we had all of that done for her. The team had that done. So you do, this is this is advocacy uh, as right. well as support Absolutely. for the families. Um, you, you mentioned fundraising for specific families, but how, how talk about your fundraising strategies and how you well, get... We have a golf outing coming up soon. We have a golf outing. Our, our big events of the year are the, our golf outing and our gala. 
and I do my own marketing, which I always, you know, could use more help that way. We're looking always for volunteers in any way, you know, to put baskets together, just to help. Do you get grants from the government? We don't. Or is it, it's all grassroots fundraising? So, yes, it is. Uh-huh. I write letters. I'm a, I'm a past PTA president and a big part of uh, the PTA's letter writing, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, I write letters to, uh, to especially to the group of 17 uh, philanthropists that have pledged to donate half their wealth to not-for-profits. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm always sending letters out there, kind of like fishing on the water. I'm trolling. We're hoping to land a benefactor that will write like a, a grant and then we could draw salaries. Uh, and then we could, I could stop doing what I do, work construction, and I could work for New Beginnings and, and just really promote the idea of adv advocacy and helping the, uh, the, the brain injured. You know, my main goal is my son Benjamin, yeah. helping him. So I, I'm the past president, vice president of BYA in Brentwood. I, I, you know, I, I believe that the role of the citizen is to serve on committee when asked. Mm. Uh, Thomas Jeffs said that. And so I've always helped. And when I was fixing the ball field and building dugouts, it was self-serving because my kids were on those fields. Sure. So the it looked like I was doing a great thing for the community. I was really helping my own kid. Now he had a better field. By serving on the board, he had a better organization. And that's how it is in the TBI community now. I want to make that as good as we can. We want to help everybody. And so just the fact that I got involved in New Beginnings, now we have a machine there, the quadricizer. Nobody offers that. The nursing home where Ben resides mm -hmm. doesn't offer. Now I, I take Ben there. And now that the winter's over, he me go there once a week. So this is a direct result of me helping. And now I get to enjoy yeah. the community yeah. is better. New Beginning sounds very unique and, and specific to this, organi to, this, uh, to this problem. And I appreciate you coming in. It's the New Beginnings Community Center. It's in, in Medford. It's in Medford. And the website is? Is um, nbli.org. And I, I just I quickly wanted to mention the Brendan House. All right, well, they can find out more information because okay. we are running out of time. But, uh, but do check out newbeginnings.org. Dot dot .org. Thank you so much. Thanks for coming in. Thank you. And thank you for listening to The Nonprofit Voice. We'll see you again next week. I'm Flo Fetterman. Well, yeah. Wow, that's